morning have a reason to praise the Lord? I know you do. I do too. He's worthy of our praise today. He's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Lord, today we love you and we bless you and we praise you. May you be glorified in this place. May you be lifted up and exalted. May you be praised forever and ever. May you be praised forever and ever. Lord, your word says that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you were there in the midst of us. And so we know that you're here in power and in might. Your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. So right now, we just want to give you our highest praise and our highest adoration. Fill this house with your glory. Father, touch our hearts and our minds right now as we go into your word. I pray that you would remove every distraction and every hindrance, and that your word would settle into the hearts of your people. And that you would be glorified. And that your word would, be, would take root in our heart and establish us. Lord, right now the enemy wants to distract us and he wants to, to get our minds in other places. But Father, keep our hearts and our minds focused on you today. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. On this day, July 4th, in the year of 1776, does anybody remember that? Was anybody there? The United States declared her independence from Great Britain on this day in 1776. And I want to read the beginning paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence. I don't know if you've ever read the documents of our nation, but it's pretty amazing stuff. And I want to read the beginning part, the beginning paragraphs of our Declaration of Independence. It says this, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. And as our founding fathers wrote this Declaration of Independence and declared that we were now free from the government of Great Britain, they also instituted a document which is known as the Constitution of the United States. Of America. And I want to read the preamble of the Constitution of the United States. It says this, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, 
establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. The freedom of America did not come solely from drawn up documents and paperwork, nor from simply the signatures of our founding fathers. There were many battles that were to be fought and won to secure and establish our freedoms here in the United States of America. And you know, one of the, something that has become very popular in the last five, ten years is the concept of fact-checking. Anybody ever been on social media and had something that you posted fact-checked? Yeah, some of it's pretty absurd. Some of it's pretty crazy. And I want to speak to you this morning on what I've entitled Freedom Fact Check. Freedom Fact Check. Because the idea of fact checking statements has become both a political and a social norm in our nation. And 99.9999999 infinity percent of the time, that fact checking is inaccurate or biased in some way or another. And this morning, I want us to do a fact check through the light of the Word of God. I want us to do a fact check on freedom through the light of God's Word. Because you know what? There are many sources we cannot trust when it comes to fact checking. If you're getting your information on facts from Wikipedia, you're in big trouble. And if you don't know what Wikipedia is, don't worry about it. It's not worth your time. If you're getting your facts from liberal media or social media or anything like that, forget it. I, I just want to cast out a, a brief reminder here. And some of you, this may shock you. Some of it, it may not. But just because something on, is on the internet, it doesn't make it true. Okay? It doesn't make it true. And to expound on that, just because our culture or our society says something is true, doesn't make it true. We have to line up our fact check with the Word of God. And my understanding is that the Word of God says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, if you read it from the New International Version translation, it says this, it is for freedom's sake that Christ has set you free. Did you know that you have freedom in Christ? Anybody here been freed from your sin because of Jesus Christ? If anybody has experienced the freedom of Jesus in your life, I just want you to shout, I'm free. I'm free. There you go. I'm free because of what Jesus Christ did in my life. I have freedom. And even if I didn't have physical freedom, it wouldn't matter to me because I have freedom in Christ. And that far surpasses anything else. A couple of facts I want to fact check on freedom as it relates to the Word of God and to us as believers. The first fact check is this, that freedom always comes with a price to be paid. Freedom is never free. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but the truth of the matter is freedom oftentimes has a hefty price tag associated with it. Many people would differ on this opinion, but I am a firm believer that there is a big price that has been paid and will continue to be paid for freedom. For freedom. As mentioned, the Declaration of Independence is one of those areas where we get our idea of freedom. The fourth section of the Declaration of Independence says this, These united colonies are and of right ought to be Free and independent. 
In other words, the United States would be a nation in which ordinary citizens would have a strong voice in governmental processes and the governing of the nation. It was believed that people had a natural right, rights that belonged to them simply because they were born human, rights that were entitled to them because they were born human, not because they were endowed those by a king or a president or a leader, but simply because of their humanness, they have these rights that have been given to them. Therefore, the Declaration of Independence had a lot to do with freedom. But I want you to understand that there was a price that was paid for your freedom in this country. Many people have died for this country, for us to have the freedoms we celebrate and we live in. They died during wars, wars like World War II. America didn't even want to have anything to do with World War II because they had just won World War I. And just as a side note, America is two-time world champion <laughs> when it comes to wars. I was going to break out in a chorus of we are the champions, my friend, but I don't think I will. But America didn't really want anything to do with World War II. Then in one day, their mind was changed because on December 7th, 1941, Japanese warplanes attacked Pearl Harbor. And it was on. And this was a global war that we got victory of in 1945. And there were a total of 61 million lives that were lost in World War II. And almost 300,000 of those were American citizens. There is a steep price for freedom. And throughout the years, many, many courageous and unrelenting men and women have taken up the cause of freedom because living free meant more to them than being under the rule of a tyrannical government. This mindset moved men like Patrick Henry to make statements like, give me liberty or give me death. Freedom was sought over everything else. I want freedom no matter what the cost. And our history books are saturated with the stories of men and women who paid the price for the freedoms and liberties we enjoy today. And it's too bad that many in this day and age do not understand the hefty price that was paid for their freedom. We see such ingratitude and such disrespect for those same freedoms that our forefathers cherished and fought for, and some of them died for. The Word of God tells us that there was also a huge price paid for our spiritual freedom. Because we were living under the rule of a tyrant. His name was Satan. And he ruled by sin. And the Word of God tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. You see, there was a certainty attached to our lives, and that was we were separated from God, and we were in bondage to sin, and the paycheck for that sin was death. But there was a huge price that was about to be paid. And it wasn't a soldier with, with hand grenades and guns. It wasn't a jet fighter coming in to save the day. It wasn't even an underdog with his cape flapping in the wind. Jesus, the precious Lamb of God, the Son of God, would become the ransom for my sin. You see, I was in bondage. I was in chains. And I could not get free. And God made a way for me to be free. 
but there first had to be a sacrifice. I'm talking about freedom always comes with a price, church. Freedom always comes with a price. And the reality is here in our nation, I feel like we are coming up to a day where we're going to have to pay the price again in order to stay free. Now, I'm not a doomsday preacher and I'm not a conspiracy theorist on some things, but when you start seeing conspiracy theories come true, it kind of, you know... But I've come to realize this. There was a day when Jesus took a cross and he beat the stew out of the devil. There was a day when Jesus took a piece of wood and knocked the devil on his butt. There was a day when Jesus was beaten, he was crucified, he was nailed to a cross. And in that moment, he set us free. Listen, when the veil tore in the temple, releasing the presence of God, he set us free. We used to sing a song. And if anybody's doing bingo, go ahead and check your thing. Um, If you don't know what I'm talking about with bingo, ask me later. We're not really playing bingo. But... We used to sing a song that said, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. For glory to God, he set me free. He paid the price. And y'all, looking back on it, we may not feel the full effect of it, but I guarantee you, he felt every punch to his face. He he felt every hair that was pulled out of his face as they plucked his beard from him. I'm talking about paying a price. You see, freedom isn't free. Because of the sins of humanity, Jesus had to lay down his life to bring freedom to all of mankind. They took him and they beat him. They put stripes on his back that were for the healing of the body of Christ. They put nails in his hands and his feet. And they put him on a cross. And they tormented him. And they mocked him. Why? For my freedom. And for your freedom. You see, just like there were men and women who laid down their lives for the cause of this country, there was a man named Jesus who laid down his life for your freedom and for my freedom. You see, freedom goes way beyond the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. But we can enjoy all of these freedoms and still not be free. Hmm. We can enjoy all of the freedoms of America and still not be free. See, some of us are still imprisoned to things of our past. Some of us are still walking around with the chains of unforgiveness in our life. Some of us are still fettered with hatred and bitterness. Some of us are still struggling in our spirit, in our heart, with our failures. God, I've failed you over and over again. And how can you possibly love me? But Jesus came to set us free on the inside. Listen, he set my spirit free. I don't have to hold on to that unforgiveness anymore. I don't have to hold on to that anger, that hatred, that bitterness. I don't have to hold on to my past and the sins that I've committed before because he set me free. He set me free. The second fact that I want you to see this morning is that freedom must be lived in to be maintained. It must be lived in. When you say, what are you talking about, Pastor? We're living in freedom. We have many freedoms here in the USA. But if we don't exercise those freedoms or live them out, we can lose them as quickly as we got them. And they mean nothing. We have the right and the freedom to vote. And this is not a political soapbox. We have the right and the freedom to vote for our federal and state representatives. But if we choose not to vote, then we are not living in our freedom and what we've been entitled to. We have the freedom to worship in any church we want to worship in, but if we choose not to intend, we're not living in the freedom to worship like we have. We have the right and the freedom to pursue happiness, but if we choose to be grumpy, (laughs) anybody grumpy this morning? 
tag your neighbor and say, are you grumpy? It's like the hat I saw one time that said, I didn't wake up grumpy this morning. I let her sleep. (laughs) We have the rights and the freedoms for a lot of things. In order for those freedoms to be real, we must exercise them. And we must live, out, live them out. Otherwise, they're simply words on a piece of paper. They're simply a document that we don't understand. Do you understand the power of our freedoms as American citizens? No other country in this world has freedom like we have it. We're free to live wherever we want. We're free to work wherever we want. We're free to worship wherever we want. We're free to make as much money as we want. Now, of course, the government's going to take their share. But we're free. We're free. Thank God we're free. Much like our freedom in Christ. When we receive Christ in the forgiveness of our sins, we are free in him completely. We are free in him completely. Look what it says in the second part of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We have to remain intentional about staying free in Christ. He has made us free, but we have to be intentional and proactive about remaining free. Listen, because we've been forgiven, we are now free to forgive. Because I've been forgiven, I'm now free to forgive you. I'm now free to forgive others. But if we choose not to forgive them, then we nullify our own forgiveness. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, the Word of God tells us in in Matthew chapter 6, verse 15, that if we do not forgive others, then our Heavenly Father will not forgive us. You see, I'm free to forgive, but am I living in that freedom? Am I exercising that freedom in my life, or am I nullifying that freedom and going back into bondage because I'm not willing to forgive? We are now free to love. But if we choose to be hateful, we surrender that love and we live contrary to the word of God and God's purpose in our lives. Church, we are free to serve, but if we choose to demand that others serve us, then we've missed the whole part of our freedom. I am free to serve. I'm free from my perceptions and my misconceptions of what it means to serve and that I I need to be served. I'm free of all of that. Your freedom in Christ is being worked out every single day of your life. It has to be exercised. And you have to make an intentional thought process of, I'm going to be free in Jesus today. I'm going to be free in him. And you know what that might mean for you? It might mean I'm going to be free in him. And last Sunday when I was in church, I was a little worried about raising my hands and praising him. But this Sunday, I'm going to be free. And I'm going to lift my hands and I'm going to praise the Lord. That freedom may come in. You know what? I have a co-worker that doesn't know Jesus, and I've been meaning to talk to them about it, but I haven't felt like I could. I haven't felt like I knew what to say or what to do. And the freedom that you have is that you have been given the power of the Holy Spirit to go forth and make disciples. You have been given the freedom of the Word of God. And the very word that comes out of your mouth might, might speak freedom in their life. It might speak freedom to them. Somebody else may be counting on you for their freedom. Think about it. Think about that. Somebody's freedom might depend on you being free enough to speak the word of God. You being free enough to praise the name of Jesus. The third thing I want you to see is, the third freedom fact is, that freedom must always be protected. It must always be protected. You know, we seem to be in a time in our nation's history where the freedoms we've loved and, and maybe take for granted 
are under attack and are in danger of being lost if we don't stand up and protect these freedoms. Our history is being dismantled with the toppling of statues and the historical erasures. Our freedoms are being challenged because of political correctness in our nation. Our liberties are being stripped away because the spirit of offense is running rampant in our nation. Our freedom of speech is being attacked as voices are silenced through social media and other media platforms. Educational agendas are being manipulated to groom students against freedom and democracy. There are hidden agendas that are set to topple our liberty and our republic as we know it. Deception, manipulation to tear down the USA and cause it to be divided and create anger and violence amongst its citizens so that we self-implode. It's possible if America does not come back to God and repent that it may not be an outside enemy of America that takes America down. America may self implode because we've been deceived, we've been manipulated. The men and women who have given their lives for our country and others who have served in the military to defend our country, some who now have permanent injuries and disabilities, some who are dealing with PTSD and other emotional and mental difficulties in their lives understood, these men and women understood that there must be someone to stand in the gap to protect the freedoms of the American citizens. There had to be someone who would stand up and stand in the gap to defend and protect our freedoms. In Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30, the anger of God was kindled against the nation of Israel. And in Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30, the word of God says that God spoke and said, So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. You know, as I thought about July 4th and Independence Day and everything that it means to me as an American, I also came to the sobering realization of what it means to me as a man of God, as a believer. Because if I truly believe that God is sovereign and that God knows my days and the day I was born and the day I die, then he also has me here at this time, at this moment in history, not to be afraid, not to back up, but to stand up, to stand in the gap, to declare the word of God and the word of freedom over our nation. You know, I love the song that we saw on video of Carmen, We Need God in America Again. And I don't think there's ever been a more profound and powerful statement than that. We need God in America again. It's not an option. If we want to maintain our, not just our physical freedoms that are outlined for us in the Constitution, if we, we want to maintain those, but also if we want to maintain our spiritual freedoms, we need God in America again. Because right now, let me tell you something, and this wasn't in my notes, but I just feel the Lord leading me to say this. Right now, in our world, not just in America, but in our world, there is such a spirit of Antichrist. And when I say Antichrist, I don't mean one guy that's come to leadership. I'm talking about a spiritual attack, a spirit, a demonic force of Antichrist that is turning our nation and our world against the Word of God. And truth no longer is, is absolute in our world. They're, they think there is nothing that is absolute. And the reality is, you could be looking somebody, I told you all this on Wednesday night, I think, you could be looking somebody in the eye, speaking the word of truth to them, and they're glazed over as if they have no idea what you're talking about. 
Because we've been so blinded. We've been so deceived in our world and in our nation. And it's not a time for the body of Christ to tuck our tails and wave the white flag and surrender. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, there are men and women who have laid down their lives for the cause of the gospel, just like there have been men and women who have laid down their lives for the cause of our nation. In Hebrews chapter 11, the, the hallmark of faith, it, it tells us, it tells us of these men and women. Some of them were fed to lions. Some of them were sawn in two. Some of them were burned at the stake. Some of them were stoned. Some of them were in prison. Some of them have their loved ones ripped out of their arms. And over and over and over again, they, they laid down their lives for the cause of the gospel. And then it goes on in chapter 12 to say, Since then we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin and the hindrances that so easily beset us and let us run with patience. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Listen, we have a, we have a monumental task in front of us, church. Because I believe that just as we're living in a day and an age where the spirit of Antichrist is prevalent in everywhere you go, I also believe that the spirit of Antichrist is not the ruling spirit on this earth. There is one named Holy Spirit who goes in and amongst the world constantly. He is part of God's created creation. He is moving in our world today. And I believe that just as there is an increase in the spirit of Antichrist, I believe there is also an increase in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we're about to see revival take place in our nation. We're about to see men and women's hearts turn. We're about to see that glazed look replaced with a look of understanding and deep truth. We're about to see freedom come to our family and our friends because of Jesus Christ. But we've got to protect it. We've got to hold on to it. We've got to fight for it. Gone are the days where the church needs to just sit back and play a little Jesus game and, and sing a little song and clap our hands. It is a moment where lines have been drawn in our nation. It is a moment where the hearts and minds and souls of our children and our teenagers are at stake. It's a moment when the church has been brought to a place where we must put on the armor of God. You don't put on the armor of God unless you're going to prepare for war. It's time for the church to put on the armor of God. We, we put on, we've had the garments of praise on. We've had all the other clothing on, the, the clothing of prayer, the scarves of prayer, all of that. But you know what? There comes a time where we've got to get up from the altar and we've got to put on the armor of God. and We've got to go forth and fight for this freedom. You want your loved ones set free and living for Jesus? You've got to put on the armor of God and you've got to fight the fight. There's a little thing called spiritual warfare. And the truth is, it's not a little thing. It's not a little thing. It's a necessary thing. And you see, I, I fear for America because we become so comfortable and so casual about our freedoms that we think it will never change. We think America will always be the way it has been. And the truth of the matter is, if we don't wake up, and I'm not talking about getting woke, I'm talking about if we don't wake up and understand the times and seasons in which we live, it could change just like that. Because another nation could come in and destroy us from the outside. Can I tell you also, if the church is not careful, and the church doesn't understand the times and seasons in which we live, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Think of how many, and, and you know, I love the body of Christ no matter what name's over the door. I don't care. As long as you preach Jesus and you preach the word of God, that's the most important thing. But so many churches and so many denominations 
have become so compromised in their belief systems and they've catered to the political correctness of our world rather than having a spiritual godly backbone and saying right is right and wrong is wrong. It's time for the church to do a freedom fact check on herself as we line up with the word of God. And it's time for the church to understand we have some freedoms and liberties, and there was a big price paid for those. It was a price of a life on a hill called Calvary. And we've got to live in those freedoms. Otherwise, we make his death in vain. Jesus didn't live for you to be free on Sunday and in bondage Monday through Saturday. He lived for you to be free. He lived for you to be, he died for you to be free. And this morning as we celebrate, and I know throughout the day we're going to be celebrating the 4th of July. I don't know what your plans are with your family, but remember that in your life there is a spiritual warfare that's taking place. The enemy of your soul is very subtle. And he is trying to dismantle and steal your freedom in Christ. But we must protect that freedom. How do we protect that freedom? We stay in the Word of God. We read it. We devotionalize it in our lives. We study it. Have you ever just sat down and studied the Word of God? I'm not talking about a casual reading or even a devotional reading. I'm talking about you dug it out. Maybe a word study where you took it verse by verse and word by word and, and just researched what it meant in the original language. Because sometimes it doesn't translate in English as well or as powerful as it is in the original languages. I believe that if we're going to rightly divide the word of truth, we have to study to show ourselves approved. Not just casual reading, but study. We've got to stay on our knees in prayer. We've got to pray, church. I know that sounds cliche-ish, and I know that sounds like Christian jargon, but the truth of the matter is, we'll only be as strong as our prayer life. If we're not people of prayer, we can't see the miracles of God. If we're not people of prayer, we're not going to see strongholds crumble and fall. If we're not people of prayer, we're not going to walk in the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is necessary for this day and age. We've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. We've got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Look what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31. And as I read this, I want you to prepare your hearts because we're going to receive communion in just a moment in remembrance of the freedom that we have in Christ. In John chapter 8, verse 31, the Word of God says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You want to know why our world's not free? Because they don't know what the truth is. They can't see the truth. And they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore... You ready for it? You might could quote it with me. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. You shall be free completely. If the Son sets you free. You see, there's something about the truth that's freeing. There's something about the truth that is liberating. Of course, we know the spoken truth is, is freeing and liberating because when you tell the truth, it's just a good thing. 
But I want you to understand also here that the truth is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You want to be free? Get set free by the truth, by the Son. We have freedoms in Christ. And this morning, I want to ask you to stand with me. And right where you are, I want to ask, if you will, to bow your heads and close your eyes. There may be some of us here in this house today, or maybe some of us watching on live stream, who although we say the words, I am free, we don't feel free in our hearts and in our minds. We're struggling, we're hurt, we're in a battle and we don't feel free. We feel in bondage to so many things. But Jesus has come today to set you free. Doesn't matter what you need to be free from, His blood covers it all. And if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Weeks, there's some things in my life that have me in a place where I don't really feel free. I know I'm supposed to be free. I know I'm supposed to live in freedom. And I may even love Jesus, and I'm saved, but there are things in me that, that feel like I'm not free, like I need to be. If that's you this morning, I want to pray over you, and I want to ask you to just slip your hand up where you are. You don't have to come to the altar. Just Jesus can meet you right where you are. You say, Pastor, I, 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 want, I need to have some freedom in my life. Just slip your hand up and leave it up for a moment. See those hands. See those hands. We all need freedom. And today, for those of you who have lifted your hands, you know the truth, and it will set you free. And right now, some of you, the enemy is trying to whisper in your ear and say, it'll never happen for you. It'll never change for you. You're always going to feel like you're in bondage. That's a lie of the enemy. I have fact-checked that, and it is a lie. Jesus has set you free. He has set you free. Father, right now, I pray for my brothers and sisters who lifted their hands and said, I need to feel free in my life. Lord, I pray that your blood would flow into their heart and their life right now in this moment. And whatever has, whatever it feels like has chains on them, I will ask you to release them. Lord, there's power in your name to break every chain. And so today, God, I pray that you will touch them Holy Spirit, you brought them here for this day, for this moment, for this service, because you wanted to set them free. Because you'd already planned for freedom in their life. Church, you are free in Jesus. Church, you are free in Jesus. Brother, you are free in Jesus. Sister, you are free in Jesus. Don't let the enemy entangle you again with a yoke of bondage. The word of God for you today is you are free in Jesus' name. You are free in Jesus' name. He took those stripes on his back and he led, let them nail him to a cross for your freedom. So get free. Shake it off. Shake off those chains. He's already released them. Shake it off. Don't hold on to them. He's already opened the locks. Walk out of the prison door. He set you free. He set you free this morning. Lord, I thank you for the freedom that we have in you. I thank you that you have released us. Lord, I pray that your people will feel that release. 
And they will feel the surge of the Holy Spirit as your power flows into our veins. And every shackle falls to the ground, helpless against us. That every attack of the enemy against our lives and our freedom in Christ would come to nothing. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, your name is liberating. Your name is freedom. Freedom in my heart. Freedom in my soul. He set me free. I am free.